We have been called the most improved school in the country because of four years of examination results which went up from 29% in 2003 to 61 in 2006. But more particularly, I think, the way we gained that nomenclature was the fact that it was including English and maths. And that went up from 19% to 57%. I've been head here for nearly five years. I arrived in September 2002. At that time, the school was designated by the local authority a school causing concern, uh, and it had quite a large deficit budget. Uh, the idea of this morning session is to recap and revise the topic of respiration. When I first came, the most immediate issues included student behaviour and uh, staff worked with me immediately on that. The what do you think the aerobic makes reference to, Lucy? It uses oxygen. It uses oxygen. So In today's lesson, the students behaved really well, but that's not always the case. You've got other groups that are more challenging, different times of the day. What does anaerobic mean? Why? It doesn't use oxygen. That's right, yeah. If a student is causing a problem, I would give that student a warning. Say, you know, if it's another warning that you receive, then you'll have to come and sit on the chair at the front. So has a chair called the Chair of Doom. Say if we learn about respiration, we have to sit there for like a couple of minutes speaking about respiration. And then the class, if they think I've done, like, done well enough, uh, I'd be able to sit in my own seat. Another prop that I use uh, were these ear defenders and the ear defenders were used if the class was getting too noisy I could spend 10 minutes trying to get them quieter but by simply putting these ear defenders on uh, one person would look round and they'd all get their attention on me. Also with me being rather follically challenged I teach the lesson uh, as me first of all and then in the second half of the lesson I'll, I'll go out of the room and I'll come back in and I'll pretend to be my brother. He does have some fairly nutty behaviour on the one hand, but an extraordinary well-disciplined classroom with whatever class he has. He just has that expectation. So you don't ever hear him shout. He just waits and they know they have to do it. Well, it makes us laugh and it keeps the lesson fun. So like, we respect him for like, letting us have a laugh in his lessons. What's the difference again between aerobic and anaerobic? Uh, in aerobic, oxygen is used. In anaerobic, eh? Excellent, well done. In our discussions with students in regular student forums and in our Learning to Learn Day that we had recently, the students have put top of their list the attitude of the teacher helping their learning. Hi, Lee. Have a seat. Okie dokie. We are, oh, we've already discussed um, past performance throughout your subjects. So, yeah. subjects, what have we got over here? We've got some good terminal grades in... I mean, your English is good, your science is good, obviously maths, we've got uh, S's and R's in there. So, is maths likely to be a subject which you find it is going to be difficult to change, or do you know how, that you're, going to, how you're going to change that subject? I don't know. It's, it's quite difficult, because it's all to do with... I don't know. It's difficult. Do you find the style of which the, the lessons are delivered to you, or the work in general, which makes it difficult for you within the subject? It's my to work. The work itself? Yeah. OK, that's not a problem at all. We'll just look, make a little scribble of that, because then what we can do... I think the students benefit from the chance to actually express their opinions. If the students have problems with other staff, with other students, with an approach, they get that opportunity in that interview. OK. How are you going to push it up to a C? What areas can you...? Well, I don't know, really. It's just concentrating in lessons. That's my big issue. If that's the real uh, problem, that's the real thing that needs fixing. As long as we're communicating um, these problems to your teachers, then there's no reason why things shouldn't be even higher. Yeah. The important thing is having a relentless focus on learning, 
and I say learning rather than teaching, but if you are teaching properly, then the learning will happen appropriately as well. Once we were on to learning and the effectiveness of it, we looked at our school day and there was a, a feeling that it would be better to maximise students' learning by having more lessons before lunch. There were reservations on the part of students. Their lunch was going to be very late. They were going to get hungry. There were reservations on the part of the staff. They were going to get very hungry. The students were going to get very hungry. So we decided we would pilot it, and there was virtually unanimous approval, and we have continued. I am a very strong advocate of networking with other schools. We had a mentor school and we have a mentor head and just spending three hours in that school as I did gave me so much learning and so many ideas that I have actively brought back those things and beginning to implement them in my own school. Uh, there are two sort of statements that are important to us. One comes from me challenging the teachers in my school. And I say to them, if students don't learn the way we teach, why don't we teach them the way they learn? And the second comes from a student herself when she said to me, when teaching takes place, it's the teacher's responsibility. When learning takes place, it's my responsibility. So it's actually a really similar method to when we've dealt with behavioural problems as well. Rather than just saying, OK, you did this, we're going to do this, when you investigate behavioural problems and ask them why, they misbehave or where they misbehave, they can come up with an opinion, sometimes rightly or wrongly, but those opinions tend to be how they feel. We've done that more in behaviour, haven't we, than we've tended to, tend to, uh, do, in to do in learning until now, really. Now we've all had that Learn to Learn Day, and I think, you know, they got a lot out of that. They really were, you know, able to feel they were being listened to, and that was in a group. And now we're doing the one-to-one -one bit, so mm. they've got that sense of really being listened to. Mm. And it's I good to share, and it does us good because we can reflect on the progress and we can use that information with Mount Fitchett and they give back to us and they challenge us on our thinking to help shape their progress and, their, and the processes that they're trying to develop in the school to, to yield benefits for their learners too. What sort of reaction have you had from your teaching staff? That is an interesting question because the danger is that, uh, OK, we've got student voice and we've got students uh, contributing, but where's the teacher voice? It's not about the learner saying, look, I only learn this way, sir, therefore you must teach me this way. It's about teachers being aware of and developing their teaching techniques, students being aware of their learning styles and developing different learning styles to support the ones that they're particularly focused on in order that there's an improvement and progress and attainment rises and that's what is the real catalyst to this, to raise attainment. Absolutely. When I first came here this school was isolated, doubly isolated really in that because it's small some teachers were the only teacher in that department so they had nobody to rub ideas off or receive ideas from. So then are you going to do a satin stitch round yeah. so that it's, yeah? Yes. Could you do with four pins in the corners to make sure that that's not going to move anywhere please? Pins are over there. I can actually get quite lonely in a funny sort of way. Um, as the only textiles expert in the school, it's nice to be able to get out and see other departments. We do share all of our best practice with one another. Have a go. When we started the paired observations, we did it systematically and we started with people watching within their subject areas. The next stage was to go cross-curricular because in fact the things you do that are good that engage and motivate in a practical lesson are exactly the same as they are in for example a languages lesson or a mathematics lesson which you might deem more academic. Right, uh, how are you all doing? Any big problems we've come across so far that we can share with everybody else or are we all totally on target? Um, I sewed the bond web on the wrong side. You sewed the bond web on the wrong side. So what are you having to do now? Cut it out again. And Cut it out again, side. start again. Yeah. yeah, so you're showing your progress. That's how you get level sixes. OK? These observations are important because I can see a completely different style of teaching and pull out of that teaching some aspects of best practice I think are worth trying in other subjects. Up on the front we have got, I am fantastic at, what you have been fantastic at today. I don't want you to tell me now, I want to start off next week with that statement. 
Useful or not? I think very useful. Um, what was very, very clear was that the students knew exactly where they were and what level they were at in a number of strands. The other thing I thought was, was great was at the end, you did a fantastic at, mm. fantastic cat. <laughs> yeah, they do very, they, I give them a little post-it note when they come in next lesson. And they, the first thing that they'll do as the start of the lesson is to write down on the poster what they were fantastic at. While I go around mm. and give them their folders out, it just gives them something different to focus on. I haven't used that, I haven't used Fantastic Cat, but I think that's something that perhaps mm. I could look at using in my lessons. It's rather a, a lovely little face, I think. Anything to bring a little bit of humour. OK, thanks for coming, Katie, Mandy. It's really great that you came along um, after college to talk to us about this. Did you fill in questionnaires for the survey? Both yes. Of, yes. Yes, OK. One thing that I was surprised at, though the overall score was OK, there was 16.5% of parents unhappy about treating all pupils fairly and equally, um, which disturbed me, because I thought that was what we were pretty good at. But I need you to be totally honest and not sort of be sensitive about our feelings or anything. But um, I think sometimes the, the kids feel that the persistent offenders that are always that causing be, yeah. problems... Um, don't always get disciplined as harshly, possibly because it's such a regular occurrence, than some of those that occasionally step out of line. Right. I really want to find out from parents what the truth is behind their perceptions of the school. Um, I don't want them to tell me what they think I want to hear, um, because we are an improved school and we are an improving school and we can't do it if people aren't honest with us. The bottom one is extracurricular activities and we knew, because we used to do our own questionnaires, we knew that that was an issue for parents because we're a small school, yeah. we can't actually provide the same. So we have worked on that a bit. Is it the case that most of your clubs, extracurricular, take place during lunch hour, so during the school? Day, so that it doesn't interfere with the school buses. Well, because there are so many that yeah. come on buses, mm, yes. they would be disadvantaged. That so, is right. And yes. I think that's again, that's probably a parent perception rather than a pupil perception. So it'd be interesting, interesting, isn't it? There are other schools that operate a late bus. Right. That's something that we might like to consider a late bus. Yes, I think if they um, had more opportunity for band practice as well, maybe after school rather than lunch breaks, because especially you know not many parents want a drum kit in their house. And, um, <laughs> I can't can... understand that. What no. that? <laughs> yeah, we have one. <laughs>the accolade the most improved school in the country and it was on a particular measure it had to be four years you couldn't have any dips it was five a to c's including english and maths if they would used any other me measure it might not have been us um, but as long as you can put your hand on your heart and say that you are doing your best for every student and that you are still working at improving the experience that they have that's what that's what success is for me